Yo, what's up everyone? Today I'm doing a review of the amazing Mag EQ 4M Mastering EQ. You probably know the Mag EQ 4 plugin. It's one of my favorite plugins. It still is, even while owning the actual unit. Today I'm giving you the review, my thoughts on the Mag EQ 4M. I think it's a must have for every mastering engineer. It's an amazing EQ. First, I'm going to walk you through the entire unit and what it can do. Then we're going to listen to some music and I'm going to show you what the EQ can do. Keep in mind that I'm using the Mag EQ 4M in mid side. This means that the right side of the EQ controls the signal on the sides and the left side controls the signal on the mids. I'm using the powerful SPL Gemini. It's an amazing unit and it's really, really the absolute best MS matrix for mastering that's available. If you don't have this, then an affordable and really effective alternative would be to use the MS matrix in the SSL Fusion. You can basically switch the inserts to MS and that way uh, Mag EQ for M will be really cool. That said though, the Mag EQ does some bands that the SSL Fusion also already has. But in my opinion, they are really super different. And um, I think the Mag EQ 4M is in its own league. So let's start all the way at the left side. There's an input attenuator. What this does is it allows you to lower the overall gain. This is always set at zero in my situation. I have a proper gain staging when mastering so I can flexibly use the EQ and boost or cut whatever amounts I need or want without going into distortion. However, if you are too loud, it allows for some control over the volume. Then this sub frequency here is incredible this is already enough reason to get a mach eq 4m this thing starts at 10 hertz so what you can do is if you're mixing if you're mastering edm bring out the low end punch it's amazing it sounds super tight solid powerful and absolutely not muddy so this is an absolute secret weapon in your mastering eq when doing dance music 40 hertz not really using it too much but if you need to you know bring out the low end in an extreme way 40 hertz is your friend you can as well lower it a bit if there's just too much happening in that region 160 is an interesting band as said before i'm using the mag mainly for air for sub and to control your upper mids tone wise but before we come to 2.5k the 160 is a really good sounding band if you as i'm running this in mid side if you want to bring out this range in the mids it's amazing it really does a great job that said you most probably are going to need to dial it in in the mix if that's the case at the stage of mastering all those kind of areas mostly are already pretty solid so you just want to have some air some low end and not do too much within the mids same goes for 650 it's a really good band every band sounds extremely good on the magic not really using them too much 2.5 that's a magical setting here this is a shelf where the other bands are bells the 2.5k is a shelf what does it mean it means that it lifts up the entire top end starting at around 2.5k this is a game changer if you are after bringing out the upper mids if you want to make a dull track sound more present it's really really good in that and i've often found myself going for one or even two clicks in some situations because i'm using it in mid side so if i just bring out one or two clicks because the numbers here aren't responding to decibels so yeah the numbers are saying five as max and five as minimum but actually in reality it's 15 db of boost and 4.5 dbs of attenuation that you can dial in so the Mar EQ already at one click does quite a lot of lift. That's important to mention as well. If you dial in any boosts in the Mar EQ, you will find that the 
overall sound gets a little bit louder. I'm using it in mid side and this way I can really easily have control in an effective way over the mid because I can just literally bring out a little bit of presence in the mid, bring out a little bit of punch in the mid, bring out the air on the mid and then go over to the sides and shape my signal there. Then we are in the middle of the unit, two buttons. You can see the umlaut on the A. If that's lit up, then you know that the unit is on. This is how we switch them on, the mids and the sides. Then right on top, you see my SPL Gemini. This controls the volume of the mids and this controls the volume of the sides. Here is an elliptical filter that can filter out anything from the sides and make it mono. This is amazing. You don't need anything more than these two units if you want. Extremely good sounding 3D and focused stereo image. It's really good. It's, it's really the best you can get. The Gemini is a must have. This is the reason that I can run the Mach in mid-side. And if this unit would leave my studio today, I would order a new one tomorrow. It's really important, really an essential tool for every mastering engineer in my eyes. So there we are on the right side of the unit, exactly the same as on the left side. What's important here is that if you decide to, let's say, cut out some stuff from the sides or boost some stuff, it can really quickly be the case that your sides are becoming way too loud because these boosts can be really drastic. So in that case, a simple mid-side matrix would already be super helpful. You could in that case simply lower the input attenuator. If you for example plug this into an SSL Fusion and use that mid-side matrix, you don't have any possibility to level your mid-side. So then you can use the input attenuator on the MAG. Um, in my case, I can just simply control the sides right here on my SPL mastering MS processor, the Gemini. So what's cool on the sides, it's cool to bring out the air. It's also cool to bring out a little bit of presence, make some space. Looking at this, this really isn't super realistic. In pretty much all cases, the settings are extremely subtle, but enough. And you will hear this when we are demoing the unit later in the video. This unit at subtle settings really, you know, gives some icing on the cake for your audio. It's, it, it's really a unit that you just don't want to deactivate it anymore. It sounds so good and super clean. So yeah, it's an um, amazing unit. And that's what the Mach EQ 4 M does. So do I need to say more? That's how the unit sounds. Especially on that last one. Did you hear the piano? It's coming out so much more catchy 
and it translates so much better. To be honest, it sounds like a completely different mix. And that's how powerful the Magi Q4M is. You almost cannot go wrong with this unit. It's such a simple and intuitive design. Of course, it's nice to have super specific EQ bands for that. In the mastering realm, I'm using the Better Maker Mastering EQ. I can literally select a specific frequency and be very precise. But for overall shaping of the mix in mid -side, I'm using the Magi Q4M and this is an amazing unit. It's it's really good and it's it's just so easy and fast to work with. I love that it's stepped. I'm doing sometimes, you know, big amounts of tracks in a day. So it's really busy and I do use different mastering settings for every track that I'm mastering here. So always, if I need to do an update or do an extra version or a stem needs to be swept or anything in mastering needs to be updated, I always need to recall the entire chain. And that's why the Magi Q4M is great because it's stepped so it can exactly dial in the same setting and that way send back a track that's exactly the same to the client and just alter what needs to be altered. And that way have a super consistent sound. So then price wise, it's dependent on where you live. In the US, the unit is a little under $2,000, which I think is a really, really good price for this amazing sounding unit. It's, it's really a no brainer. In the EU, it's almost $1,000 more expensive, depending on where you buy it, at what moment. I've seen some different pricing, but still, it's a really good deal. And yeah, this EQ is a no-brainer. It's super simple, easy to use, only one use space. So yeah, you can basically throw it in your rack and get started the same day. It has not really, has a learning curve. It's, it's a really easy unit to understand and a difficult unit to go wrong with. What can be a bit a pain is if you use it in stereo and you need to use the same settings on left and right. However, there are some people that like to change the left and right signal, but yeah, I'm sure that's not a really big amount of people. I would definitely have preferred a stereo unit that or this unit with just a stereo link button where the left side controls the right side as well. In my case, that's not a problem because I'm using it in mid side anyways. But yeah, that would, would have been cool for people that use it in stereo. The plugin, let's start with that. The plugin is really super good, but it's best when using it in a subtle way. If you do one or two clicks on the 2.5K, it sounds really good. If you add a little bit of air, it's sounding really good. If you add tons of air, it starts to sound super digital and harsh. Whereas the analog unit, even at settings that I'm not even using in a real-time scenario, such as completely open air, it's still not harsh. It opens up a super expensive sounding top end and it never gets that sh -sh -sh harshness that the plugin quite quickly does get. Then on the low end, there is definitely a good quality to be found in the plugin on the low end. It's nice, it has a good oomph, but if you listen to the low end on the actual unit, it's just from another world. It's so solid, controlled. The overall image of the sound just sounds really crispy. The separation is really good and it doesn't smear the transients as the plugin does. Then getting back on the dynamics is super cool because in the analog unit, you can see that some of the peaks are shaved off. That's like you get two for the price of one. It's so nice and it really is powerful in not only shaping the tone, but as well shaping a little bit the overall solidity of the track. And this is really cool because in mastering is really an equation of all the processes combined in the order that they are being applied, which is causing the sounds to be as it is. This is so cool. So if you as a mastering engineer have different units at your disposal, it's really important to know this unit does this, this unit does this. And I hope that it's been clear. I hope that you uh, yeah, don't have too much questions after this, but if you do, just leave them below and I'll be there for you to answer them. Also, if you're not sure on buying the unit or if you are doubting between this and something else, 
or have any questions, just know that I love answering those for you uh, if I have time and I'll make time for that. So you can just leave them in the comments and I'll be coming back to you. If you need music to get mastered, then yeah, just reach out through thismixesick.com. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yo.